This is a video about the free RBF nodes add-on developed by Ingo from Brave Rabbit. Quick plug, you can now get access to all CG Dive tutorials, including my extensive paid courses, unreleased videos, and supporter-only content for just $5.99 a month. Check out academy.cgdive.com slash subscription. For those of you who have never heard of RBF, I'll spend a couple of minutes explaining some basics. If you're already familiar with the concept, you can skip ahead to the practical part of this tutorial where I'll demonstrate how to use the add-on and then we'll go into some practical examples. So what is RBF? RBF stands for Radial Basis Functions and heck if I know what that means, but fortunately we don't have to understand it. Using RBF, we can create complex relationships between multiple objects in a Blender scene. And once you get the hang of using the add-on, working with RBF is actually quite intuitive. Using RBF is somewhat similar to creating automations using constraints or drivers. However, the relationships that you can achieve using RBF can be a lot more complex, often even impossible to achieve using regular Blender tools. For example, using a regular Blender driver, I can create an automation so that when I move the cube on the z-axis, the monkey spins and it is scaled up. This is based on a straightforward mathematical formula. Generally, with regular drivers, one input value can drive one or many outputs. Using RBF, on the other hand, I can create crazy relationships like this one, where moving, scaling, and changing the color of this cube controls the rotation and color of the monkey. Granted, this is not a very practical example, but it is meant to demonstrate how complex the relationships can be. Again, more practical examples are coming later in the video. It is important to note that RBF is not a replacement for the regular constraints and drivers. When you need a straightforward automation where one value drives another, you should still use regular drivers. But when drivers fail to achieve your goal, then it may be time to give RBF a try. I know someone might ask about this, so a while ago I made a video about another RBF add-on. It is a paid add-on called RBF Drivers. However, this add-on now looks abandoned, it hasn't been updated in ages, and I cannot get in touch with the developer at all. So if you need RBF functionality, I recommend the RBF Nodes add-on, because it is free and it has an active developer. To download RBF Drivers, go to BraveRabbit.com and you'll find it under Tools. Now, while you're here, Brave Rabbit has even more tools. A lot of them are for Maya, but there are a couple of other Blender add-ons as well. There is Pickwalk, Rapid SDK, Thumbmate, Tool Shelf, and Place Reflection. These are all high-quality add-ons that you can get completely for free by just pressing the download button. Now I'm going to go to RBF Nodes, scroll down and click the download button. Here you can watch a quick intro video about RBF Nodes and if you scroll down under tutorial, you'll find a more in-depth tutorial by the add-on creator himself. So I hope my tutorial will be useful, but this one is also very important. To install the add-on in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click Install, find the zip file that you downloaded, highlight it and install add-on, and then place a check mark. Once it is installed, it will create a new RBF Notes editor, and you can switch any of Blender's areas to be that editor. Now we are ready to start using the add-on. So of course you can press New to create a new RBF Note tree and then press Shift A and start adding inputs and outputs and RBF. But actually, if I undo, one of the easiest way to create the basic RBF setup is to go here to the side panel, RBF nodes, and click Create New RBF Setup. And that will create a new node tree and it will give you the basic nodes that you need to get started. 
So what you definitely need is an RBF node, which can be created from Shift A, RBF, RBF. Then on the left side, you have driver objects. And on the right side, you have driven objects. So let's create an additional object like a monkey. And I'm going to set the cube as the driving object and the monkey as the driven object. But this is still not enough. We need properties or values on this side to drive properties or values on the other side. To set up the properties, I can press Shift A and choose from inputs and outputs. So I'm going to go through the inputs first and the outputs are actually exactly the same. It's just that inputs are driving values and outputs will become driven values. So under input, first we have object input, which we are already using. We can use properties from multiple objects, but I'm going to come back to this in a second. For now, let's delete this and go to input. And so the properties that are quite easy to understand are location, rotation and scale. To use these properties, first I have to plug them into the object input. And I can connect multiple properties like this. That is not a problem. In fact, that is the strength of RBF that we can use multiple values. And finally, I also have to enable which axis from these inputs will actually be used in the RBF calculations. Of course, I can just enable everything, but that has a cost. So you should only enable the axis or the properties that you really intend to use. The rotation input and output is interesting because you can choose between Euler, Quaternion and axis angle. And in my experience, it seems to be best to use the mode that you're actually using on the object. So most objects will be in Euler mode. So here I'm going to use Euler and enable some axis. But bones in Blender are often in Quaternion mode, so I'll probably switch to Quaternion for bones. In this case, I won't be using rotation as an input, so I'm going to delete it here. But I do want to use scale, so I'm going to enable X, Y, and Z here. And I actually want to use rotation as an output, so I'll just go to Shift A, Output, Rotation, Output, and connect it in here. And since this is an object, it will be in Euler mode, so I'll keep Euler and enable X, Y, and Z. Let's explore what other inputs and outputs we have besides the transformation ones location, rotation, and scale. We have property input, which I can create. And at first there will be nothing in the drop-down menu because it needs some context. I need to connect this property to an actual object. And now the menu will display some actual properties. Now these are not very useful for the object, but if I create a light, for example, and then create a new object input and set it to be the point, the point light, and then create a property input and plug it into the light object. Now this gives me access to a lot of useful properties such as the color of the light, its strength and so on. And if I wanted to use this as an input, I have to plug it here into the objects field of the RBF node. So you can plug as many objects here in the objects field and all properties that lead to the object input will be used as driving properties. Now the light was just an example. I'm going to delete the inputs and the light itself. Next, we have custom input and custom output, of course. And that refers to custom properties on your objects. Now this menu will contain nothing because it's not plugged. And even if I plug it, there will be nothing because there are no custom properties. But if I go to the object, object tab, custom properties, and create a new custom property, then it will appear here in the list. And I'll be able to use it as a driving property. And it will work exactly the same way on the other side as a driven property. Okay, let's delete this. It was just an example. Next, we have modifier input. And that allows you to use the properties of a modifier as inputs or outputs. So I'm going to have to apply some sort of a modifier. Let's say remesh. Then plug this input into the object. Now I'll be able to access the remesh modifier, which will give me another drop-down menu. 
and now I'll be able to select the exact value that, I'm, that I want to use as a driving value. I haven't used modifiers in RBF in practice, but it is nice that we have access to all of these properties. Next we have node input, which allows you to access the properties of shader nodes and even geometry nodes. So people are already doing crazy stuff with geometry nodes. I can't even imagine what people can achieve if they combine it with RBF. In this node, you can choose if you want to use a material or a geometry nodes node, and then you have to manually fill in these fields, which can be a little bit difficult. So instead what you can do, I'm going to delete this and create an actual material for this object. Then split a window and make it into a shader editor and then select my principled BSDF node. And from the RBF menu, click link input node. And that will automatically create this node, set it to material and fill in these fields, the parent field and the node field. So now all you have to do is use the drop down menu and select the exact property that you want to use. Base color will probably be a common one, but you can use any of these values. So I'll choose base color and that filled out this field for me and it calls it inputs zero. So base color is the first input. So it is input zero. Encoding the first number is often zero instead of one. Then if you wanted to access the subsurf, it would be one. So you just have to replace zero with one here, or you can, of course, choose it from the drop-down menu. Subsurf radius will be two, subsurf color will be three, and so on and so forth. One thing to note here is that the material property is plugged here directly into the nodes field, but that doesn't have any special meaning. It just defines a driving value, just like the location and scale input. So currently we have location XYZ, scale XYZ, and base color as driving values. A geometry node can be accessed in a very similar way. If I change this to geometry nodes, create a new node tree, and add some sort of a node. I can select this node and link it as input or output node. And that will automatically set it up for me. However, unlike the materials, the dropdown doesn't contain anything. I'm not sure if that is a bug or a blender limitation, but for now that is what I see. But we can set up the plug field exactly the same way as materials. I just need to type inputs square bracket, and then the number of the input that I want to use. Let's say two, which will be edge crease. Again, the first input is actually the zero input, and that is mesh. One would be levels, two edge crease, and three vertex crease. I haven't used geometry nodes in practice yet, but if you need to use them, this is how you would access the nodes. And there is one input output that I skipped, and that is shape key. As all other nodes, you have to plug this input into an actual object, and then you have to have shape keys. Currently we have none, so I just have to go to the object data properties, shape keys, and create some shape keys, and that will give me access to the shape keys. Now, actually, I'm going to use the shape key as an output. So let's create output, shape key, output, plug it into Suzanne. Go to Suzanne and create shape keys. And for this key one, I'm just going to move a vertex somehow, something like this. So now I have this shape key. And I'm going to choose it here in my shape key output. So this was a full overview of all the inputs and outputs. I focused on the inputs mainly, but outputs work in the exact same way. So I think all outputs and inputs should be clear by now. And then we have the RBF node. So we already got one RBF node by clicking this button in the beginning. By creating two or more RBF nodes, you can set up multiple RBF relationships. So this second RBF node will have its own inputs and outputs. 
and it can drive another relationship in your scene. For now, I'll keep things simple and just focus on a single RBF node. The next step in the process is to start creating so-called poses. Here on the RBF node, we have poses input and we have add pose button. However, before you start, it is very important to make sure that your driving values and driven values are set up correctly. Because if you add poses and then you realize that something is wrong with your setup, for example, that you want to add or remove input properties, then your poses will become invalid and you have to start over. So for this setup, I won't be moving the cube in the Y axis. So I'm going to disable it here. And for scaling, I'm going to be scaling uniformly. So X, Y, and Z will have the same value. That means that I can optimize this setup by leaving only one scale axis, for example, the X. For input, I actually want the base color, not the subsurface. And my output values seem fine. Poses are a set of values for the driver objects and driven objects, which basically say when the driver properties are in this state, the driven properties should be in this state. And by defining several of these poses, the RBF algorithm can then interpolate and it can find solutions for any state of the driving properties and translate them into a result for the driven properties. So let's try to set some poses for our setup here. The first pose that you set should be something that can be considered a default pose. So let's say that this is the default state of our setup. I'm going to add a pose and a new node will be added here that is plugged into poses. And now for my additional poses, which will define the behavior of this RBF setup, I have to move the driving object I have location, scale, and um, color. So I'm going to move it, scale it, and change the color. And then I also have to change the state of the driven object. And for the driven object, we have rotation and a shape key. So I'm going to rotate it and let's set the shape key value to one. And once I'm done with this pose, I have to press the add pose button. And that defined our first actual pose. So that is the workflow. You set the pose, which means that you tweak the relevant properties, and then you click the add pose button. So here I'm going to move the, the cube again, scale it down, change the color, and then rotate the monkey and change the key value and add a pose. And let's do one more. and add a pose. On each pose, you have a recall and edit button. Recall will set all relevant properties to the state of that pose. So here we have the default pose, pose one, pose two, and pose three. And here you may notice that even though I scaled uniformly, the cube is only scaled on the x-axis. That is because the scale input was set to only x. And so the RBF setup only remembers the X value. If you want to edit the state of a pose, you have to press the edit button, then tweak your pose and then disable the edit button. So let's say that I want to edit pose two. But I'm somewhat happy with the pose. I just want to tweak it. I can click recall to get this pose and then press the edit button. And then let's say that I want to move it a little bit and change the color only slightly. Then I'll disable the edit button. And now this will be the edited pose. So if I recall pose one and then pose two, you'll see that the pose was edited. So now I'll press recall for pose zero to set everything to its default state. And then I can actually activate the RBF setup. When you activate it, if everything went well, it should turn green. If you get some errors and it turns red, then something is wrong and you have to check for error messages and so on. But now if I move the cube, scale it and change its color, you'll see that the monkey is rotating and the shape key is affected. So here I'm more or less going through the poses that I set up, which will give me more or less the pose that um, I set for the monkey. 
But the whole point of the RBF setup is that we are not limited to these exact poses. I can move the cube and scale it and change its color. And for each pose of the cube, RBF will find a solution for the monkey, for its rotation and the state of its shape key. And from here, if you're not happy with the results that you're getting, you can reset the RBF node and keep adding additional poses. If we zoom in on the RBF node, it has a kernel and radius settings, which can be changed. And if we activate the setup, these settings define how RBF is interpolating between the poses that we set. And all of these are based on complex mathematical formulas, so it is not really feasible for a human to understand or to predict how they will behave. So the general advice here is to first use the defaults, and then once you set up your poses, you can just experiment with these settings and find out which one gives you the best results. I will say though that linear, in my experiments, often gave me predictable results. These are the basics of using RBF nodes. In part two, I'll give you a step-by-step -step of setting up a clavicle automation using this add-on. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the new CG Dive Academy platform. Check it out because I believe it is the best way to enjoy CG Dive content and you'll be getting a lot of perks. Also click like, subscribe and leave a comment to let YouTube know that this video is cool. Thanks.